you don't want to record a podcast? But this is going to be our last one we do here. Yeah, we should do it. Yeah. Why don't you go get a Chewy? Go get a Chewy. She's going to go get a Chewy. Hello everyone and welcome to the D Hard House. My name is Alicia. Uh, today is Thursday, July 25th, and this is my podcast about the fiber related crafts. So welcome everyone. And I do mean everyone. So uh, I do want to put out there a quick statement here at the beginning that every single person on God's green earth is welcome to this podcast. All right. Um, I have not been in the loop on recent events that have occurred within the knitting community. And I apologize for that. Uh, I have been packing up my house to move and I just haven't been on my phone as much as I usually am. So I missed, I missed a lot, it sounds like. So, um, so let me just say that I don't know all of what happened. I'm still going back and trying to read and figure out what happened. Uh, but for any of you that um, were hurt by someone's actions, um, I, I just can't even. So I welcome everyone to this podcast. Uh, a big reason why I started this podcast, actually, yes, the reason I started this podcast in the first place is that I wanted to be able to share my experiences, but more importantly, open up a doorway to hear other experiences. And of course, uh, it's uh, it's a knitting, crocheting, spinning, all that kind of podcast. So, I mean, obviously that is what I want to talk about, but I want to talk about that with so many people. So, I hope that you feel welcome here. I hope that this podcast can bring a little bit of light to your day. Um because that is the whole goal is to share uh something positive with the world and uh hopefully get something positive back in return so i hope that you feel welcome here uh because you are you are so uh i hope that was i hope that was clear um <laughs> So I am, like I said, uh, packing and moving. So I have not been super active on social media and keeping up with everything that's going on. Um, I am packing up to move across the country, which uh, for those of you who have moved before know that it's really... Um, it's time consuming and it's energy draining and it's all the stresses and everything. So, um, yeah, so that's what's, that is what has been going on in my life right now. Um, besides, uh, knitting and crafting. So, um, to transfer into the main part of the podcast, um, this will be the last episode that I record in this house. All right. So I am currently in Big Spring, Texas, and we are moving to Tacoma, Washington next month. 
very soon. So, yes. I apologize if you can hear Marjorie moving her bone around in the hallway. She heard me say her name. <laughs> anyway, um, so we finally found a house. Well, we've been finding all kinds of houses to rent, but we have finally locked down a lease on a house. Thank God, um, because I was really worried we were going to be homeless there for a little bit um, and living out of a hotel or something because a lot of property management property management companies uh, company is that the right word um, a lot of the property managers if you will uh, require that you that you go visit the property before you can apply to rent and even sign the lease so So they require that you uh, actually physically go visit the property before you can even apply to rent or even sign a lease for that property. And being so far away, that's hard because it does cost money to send someone out there on a flight or to drive out there and then when you're given 24 hours notice that there's going to be a showing um anyway so we've been struggling with that but we finally found a property manager <laughs> that was willing to work with us being so far away and we did a virtual tour they recorded a video of the of the inside and outside tour of the place um, and yes, we finally locked something down so we know exactly where we're going. We know how big the space is. We know now what we can and cannot take with us. So that is a lot of stress right there off my shoulders. So, so now that I know, um, exactly what... Um, so now that I know exactly where we're going, the, the actual house, right? We've got an address. I know how many bedrooms. I know the square footage, right? So now we're able to actually, um, pack things we weren't sure about because we were, we weren't sure if we were going to have to downsize a lot or just a little. And thankfully we don't have to downsize a lot. Yes. Uh, I don't know if a packing and moving vlog would interest anyone because packing and moving is so much fun, right? <laughs> but I might throw something like that together, especially, I'm looking out the window, by the way, <laughs> especially when we are driving across the country. I really want to film some footage of that. I'm super excited. Um, yeah, so... I have a job lined up ready to go. Uh, Michael almost has a job lined up ready to go. We now have a place that we're going to live. Uh, and this is all out in the Seattle area. So um, I haven't narrowed down all of the geography yet and names of places. But uh, we have gone out to Seattle, that area, to vacation several times. That is the first place that Michael and I went on vacation. So when we first got together while we were still in grad school that summer, we planned a vacation and we went to Seattle. We went out all the way to the West Coast and camped on the beach and it was the best vacation ever. Ever. So I'm really excited to be moving to a place where we already have a lot of good memories and now we're going to make more. So let me talk about uh, the crafting that I have finished and am still working on. Uh, how long has it been since? So I did put up, I'm going to look on my phone to see when I posted the last episode because it seems like a really long time ago. 
I have posted a few um, vlog type videos where um, I've, I'm calling them a craft along because I'm video logging a particular craft that I'm doing. So I have posted a couple of craft alongs. I have um, the process of carding wool, so wool prep, and then spinning that wool. Excuse me. Uh, and then the last episode, it looks like, was two weeks ago. So in that time, I have <laughs> prepped fiber and spun it, and it's right here on the uh, pegboard. So let me take that down so I can give you a closer look. So here is the yarn all spun up, completely finished and ready to go into a knitting project. I couldn't be happier. <laughs> so uh, if you go back and watch the craft along videos, I what I did is I took a braid of fiber and it was kind of matted down from being in storage. And what I did is um, some fiber prep. And the fiber prep I chose to do was using hand carters and putting the fiber into little Rolags and then spinning from those Rolags. So I've got two videos on that, one on the fiber prep and the second one on the spinning. So uh, this was a four ounce braid. And so on out of those four ounces, I have a little over 400 yards here, which is really good. So it is about a fingering weight, which is what I was shooting for. And so I couldn't, I couldn't be more pleased. This is just really awesome. So the fiber came from Blue Mule Farm and the colorway is Bluebird. And this was a, I believe 19.5 micron merino. So this is 100% merino. So because of the fiber content, I want to knit a shawl out of this. So uh, it is a two ply, two ply yarn, uh, just a traditional two ply. I spun the singles in the clockwise direction, which is S twist, right? I think. And then I plied in the counterclockwise direction, which is a Z twist. Gosh, I hope I'm right. <laughs> Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I, uh, I think in the clockwise, counterclockwise, I can't remember S and Z to save my life. But I think I'm right. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I have an Ashford traditional spinning wheel and the bobbins are kind of small, so I could not do, um, all four ounces using, what, what are the words I'm looking for? What, what am I trying to say? I had to split this in two because there was not a, enough space physically on the bobbins to do any more. In fact, the second, I think this is the second half because um, the second half was a little bit bigger than the first half. Um, the bobbin was kind of overloaded even just to do the second half. So there is no way that I could have put all four ounces of this two ply on a single bobbin while plying. So I had to split it up, which is fine. I can live with that. Uh, but hopefully someday I put it on my wish list for Christmas and my birthday. Um, I would like to get a jumbo flyer and jumbo bobbin for my spinning wheel so that I could do all four ounces together as one full skein. But it's not necessary. This is fine. This is fine. So I, I couldn't be happier. It, um, 
it looks it looks so nice. I'm so happy with the finished result. So I finished some more short shorties. This has been my treadmill knitting slash car knitting slash couch sitting watching TV knitting. Uh, and I have finished them. So uh, these are my short shorties. I'm really into short socks right now, probably because it's so flipping hot outside. So I've been knitting a lot of short shorties. And uh, these are some really nice uh, self-striping ones. So this main color here on the sock is a self-striping yarn from Mustache Yarns. Uh, and those are separate words, must stash. Oh my goodness. And this colorway is Leia. It's one of the Star Wars colors. Uh, I had previously knit myself a pair of socks out of this yarn. I even used the same navy blue contrast for the heels and toes on that other pair. I had enough left over that I said I can totally get some short shorties out of it. So that's what I did. So, um, yeah, I just popped in a contrast heel and uh, used almost all of the scraps to finish the sock. So, the skein of this yarn that I bought uh, was one of her, what does she call them? Mm, perfect, is that her? Or is that someone else that calls them that? Anyway. It's, it's a full 100 gram skein. But what she does is she, she splits it up for you into two halves, 50 and 50. And those two halves are meant to perfectly match. So when you knit them up, your socks will match. Now, you can see here, right after the heel, right? I've got like three rows of the white here, maybe four and one, maybe two rows of the white right here. So it is a little off, just a little though. And it was a little off on my other pair as well. So I think that's um, my fault. Like one of the socks had a little bit longer tail than the other from the cast on. Uh, but oh my gosh, you're not gonna be able to tell when they're on my feet. I love these colors and I love mustache yarn. So these are finished. I knit these on a USI Zero Chowgu needle. I did knit these two at a time, which I don't do very often, but I like to do every once in a while. So I cast these on and I knit them two at a time, um, which is a really fun when you've got the two um, skeins that are supposed to match and seeing how um, close they were on the needles, that was really nice. And uh, yeah, 64 stitches, short row heel with the contrast color. Um, I believe this is a Cascade Heritage yarn, um, but it was in my scrap, scrap yarn bin and I didn't put the label with it. But it's a nice uh, dark navy blue. And they're wonderful, and now I can wear them now that I've shown them to you. And they match my dress, and it'll be so awesome. And then there were works in progress. <laughs> and I have quite a few works in progress. Um, partially because I've been casting things on, uh, but also because I have some projects that... <sighs> they're, they're the sweaters that I'm working on that take a while, so... Here we go. So since I finished my short shorties uh, that I just showed you, I needed some more treadmill knitting. So I cast on um, another short shorty. So I am really loving knitting these out of self-striping yarn uh, because I like doing stockinette stitch with self-striping yarn so that the stripes look really crisp and clean and it's easy to see. So this... Um, self-striping yarn is Knit Picks Felici and the light is just blowing this out I'm really there we go now you can see the yellow that's in there so there's yellow gray and then blue so like a super light blue here like almost white but really light blue um, yep 
So there it is. I did pop in a contrasting short row heel and that contrast is out of Knit Pick Stroll. So the self-striping is Stone Harbor. So Knit Picks Felici. Oh my goodness. There we go. In Stone Harbor. And if you purchase Knit Pitch, Knit Pitch, Knit Picks Felici, um, their self striping yarn, um, one thing to pay attention to is that these are not forever colorways that you can always get at Knit Picks. So they roll out Knit Picks Felici lines of color. So if you find a self-striping skein um, that you like, you kind of need to get it. You need to get it when you see it on there because it's not going to be there forever. Um, so that's what I did. I really like this one, so I got it. And that contrasting heel is Knit Pick Stroll in the blue topaz colorway. Um, and this is on one of their 50 gram balls and uh, it doesn't it does not exactly match the blue that is in the self striping the blue that's in the self striping is more um, oh, that is white that is white I'm sorry I misspoke earlier it looks like it has a bluish tint because of all of the blue around it. That's what's going on. Anyway, so the blue topaz here on the heel does not exactly match the darkest stripe, but I like that. So you can tell that it's different, that it's not a part of the stripes, but it still matches and coordinates. So anyway, I've got this needle here trying to poke me in the face. <laughs> so I am knitting this um, same as the others. Uh, USI Zero Chowgu needle. I do have a 40 inch cable on here for when I do want to knit two at a time. I love the magic loop method because it makes it really easy to try this sock on. And I have 64 stitches and now that I'm past the short row heel it's going to be pretty straightforward knitting on the treadmill. So I only have the first sock on the needle and uh, this is pretty much only getting worked on when I'm walking on the treadmill. Uh, this will also make a good project for when we are on the road and I happen to be a passenger. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, I'm not working on this so much while watching TV. So I have a languishing work in progress and these are the needles. So I'm at a section where it is off the needles right now. So this is a sweater that I am knitting for my husband. And let me find the good cover picture. There we go. All right, I need that page. But this is the Ranger by Jared Flood. There, men's textured cardigan. Um, I knit one of these for my dad last year, and now I'm knitting one for my husband. And I have finished both sleeves and the body. And what I need to do next is the, um, the collar and then the uh, button band. And that's all I have left to do. However, this is how much yarn I have. This is not enough. I, I am out. This is all that I have. So I'm at a pausing point right now because I have to order more yarn for this project. But we are moving. And I don't know how long it will take for that yarn to get delivered. And I don't want it to be forwarded through the mail and have to deal with all of that. So this project, I'm going to pull it out and show you where I am right now. But this project is now being put into 
dormant status until after we move and I can order another skein. So this yarn is, uh, it's a worsted weight pattern. So I have worsted weight yarn. This is from Craftsy, which is now Blueprint. But I ordered this yarn when it was still Craftsy. Uh, so this is Cloudborn uh, Highland Worsted in, I believe, a charcoal heather colorway. And it's really nice, really, really nice gray, in my opinion. Uh, I think this is going to be really flattering on my husband. Okay. So, I have bound off the neckline. So it is a bottom up construction. Uh, in the pattern, Jared has you knit the sleeves first and then you cast on at the bottom edge of the sweater, work up to the armholes, then you put the sleeves back on the needles and then knit um, the yoke portion up here on the shoulders and stuff. So I have bound off here, but like I said, I know that that is not enough yarn for the collar and the button band. I could at least get the collar done, but honestly, I mean, this thing, when it sits in your lap, I mean, it's just a bunch of dead weight on my needles. Anyway, I'm just going to wait and finish this up after we move. And that's not what I wanted to happen, but I need more yarn. Anyway. Um, I am using the needle size called for in the pattern, which I believe is a US 7, and the size yarn. I did, um, I did gauge swatch, uh, I did make a swatch to check my gauge, uh, plus I knit the same pattern, uh, last year, so I'm pretty familiar with it, and, uh, I'm loving how it's turning out. I'm just really disappointed that I didn't order quite enough yarn. I'm also disappointed about the prices that I saw on Blueprint um, when I checked last week because I bound off the neckline last week. Um, I went online to order the last skein and I couldn't seem, I couldn't put the skein of yarn in this color in my cart. And I don't know if that's because they're out of stock, but I could order a different color, but I couldn't order this color. So is it because you're out of stock? Cause it didn't say out of stock on the website. Is it because I'm not a member? Is this a members only colorway? I don't know, it, it didn't say, but it wouldn't let me put that skein of yarn in my cart. So that's another reason why I'm waiting is that, oh gosh, it makes me so disappointed. And then there's member pricing versus non-member pricing, which I understand when you have a membership system, but 2020 hindsight, right? Like I should have ordered one more skein. Oh well. So, this mountain will get tackled after I move to Washington. But I'm almost there. I'm almost there, and I would totally be working on it if I had the yarn, but I don't. So, since Michael's sweater is not getting worked on, I started working on my sweater again. So, I'm working on Radiate by Hohi Locatelli, and, um... I printed this in black and white, which this pattern is all about the color and you can't even see it. Um, but it's got um, color detail on the yoke. So I'll show you what I have so far. So I had finished the uh, body last time and I've picked up a sleeve so see it's all about the color 
up here and I picked a nice bright orange in the pattern pictures uh, on Ravelry she used a bright pink uh, but I'm more of an orange person so I went with orange and uh, yeah so I picked up a sleeve and I'm slowly working on this um, I'm following her pattern decreases so far for the sleeve. However, I have noticed that uh, if I want a particular fit on the sleeve, then I just need to do my own thing and try it on a whole, you know, hundred bunch of times. So I might end up doing that. So this may or may not see some time um, in the near future, uh, just because it's going to require a lot of thinking and writing and trying on. It might not get worked on while I'm packing and moving. <laughs> uh, but we'll see. I, I mean, who knows? <laughs> who knows? But yes, I, I am loving this knit. The pattern is very clear and easy to follow. I love the color um, aspect of the sweater. I think this is going to look really nice with a pair of um, dark blue jeans. I think it's gonna look really nice. So I am excited about this this sweater. I did not want to finish this before Michael's sweater, which is the only reason that I stopped working on it. So I'm allowing myself the possibility of finishing this before his sweater simply because I'm having trouble getting the yarn to finish his sweater. So I might be checking out D stashes just in case someone happens to be D stashing that yarn. Um, because I don't know why I'm having trouble. But anyway, uh, this Hohe Locatelli pattern radiate is awesome and I can't wait I can't wait to wear it it's gonna be it's gonna be great anyway I'm done rambling at the end of this episode I am going to take my dog for a walk and then make lunch and get back to packing so I will see you guys when I see you I don't know when I will put up another regular episode like this uh, but you can look forward to some vlog type videos coming about, uh, about my move. So <laughs> thank you for sticking around. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week, the rest of your month, however long it is until I see you guys again. Um, be happy and I will see you next time. Bye.